Welcome to Elite Medical Prep's 5-Minute Q Review. My name is Marcel Bruce Raymer, and today we're going to do a rapid high-yield review of a USMLE Step 1 question. Some of the discussion will also be useful for those preparing for Step 2 and Step 3. Okay, let's get to our question, because as on test day, time is precious. So here's our question. I'll read it for you. A 9-year-old girl is brought to the emergency department by her parents after being found in an agitated and confused state. The child regularly plays alone while exploring their large wooded backyard. She had been in normal health until about two weeks ago when she developed fever with nausea, vomiting, and headache. Physical exam is notable for a scar at the back of her left heel with associated numbness. The girl appears mildly dehydrated, which her parents report is due to her refusal to drink water. Which of the following is the most likely diagnosis? And we have a number of answer choices listed here. I'll read them. Answer choice A, Guillain-Barre syndrome. Answer choice B, herpes encephalitis, answer choice C, HIV infection, D, West Nile virus, E, rabies, F, tetanus, G, varicella, and H, variant Creutzfeldt-Jakob disease. Please note that this vignette is the first half of a two-part question, and the second part will come shortly. So let's take a closer look at our question. As you can see, I've highlighted a couple of key words in the vignette. I highlighted the words two weeks ago, scar, and a refusal to drink water. Let's start, start with the word two weeks, which we know is a duration of time. In any vignette, time should always be a keyword to focus on. Time is a great differentiator in many disease processes, especially in neurological and psychological diseases. On the basis of time, we can eliminate two answer choices, HIV and CJD, because both of these are very chronic, slowly progressive diseases. Next, let's think about the word scar. This is an unusual piece of information, and these unusual pieces of information are there for a purpose. A scar on the heel of a child implies some kind of wound or some kind of bite. And we're not talking about mosquito bites here. So on the basis of that, we can eliminate a couple more answer choices. Guillain-Barre, herpes, varicella, and West Nile virus. Finally, let's turn our attention to the refusal to drink water, which is likely due to hydrophobia. Hydrophobia, of course, is strongly associated with foaming at the mouth. And this, as we should all know, is classic for rabies. So the answer choice here is rabies. Great. So the first part of our question was pretty straightforward, but the USMLE rarely makes the question so easy. So let's look at part two. I'll read it for you. The infection enters the nervous system by binding acetylcholine receptors in the muscle. Which part of the spinal cord is typically first affected by the infectious agent responsible for the girl's symptoms? And we can see that our answer choices are listed on a diagram of a spinal cord. So this question essentially asks, what is the relevant neuroanatomy that underlies the transmission of rabies virus from the bite wound to the central nervous system? Even if we don't know anything about rabies preferred route of spread, we can answer this question. The key is to first identify the clues. Acetylcholine receptors are present at the neuromuscular junction, where the lower motor neuron is synaptically coupled with the muscle unit. So that means that the virus is being transported retrograde via the lower motor neuron. The lower motor neuron cell body sits in the ventral spinal cord gray matter. If the virus continues moving retrograde along the motor pathway, it would then cross the synapse to the upper motor neuron, which is colored in blue. Remember, this movement is retrograde. Normally, motor information from the brain descends via the cortical spinal tract neurons, who then synapse on the lower motor neurons, who in turn synapse on the muscles. So that means the correct answer here is D. But for completeness sake, let's quickly review what the other answer choices represent. A represents the dorsal columns containing ascending and sensory information, including touch and vibration. B is the dorsal root entry zone where primary sensory fibers enter the spinal cord. C is the central canal and central gray matter, which contains crossing pain and temperature fibers. E, of course, denotes the cortical spinal tracts. And finally, F is the spinal thalamic tract containing ascending pain and temperature fibers. So we've successfully answered both parts of our two-part question. However, the key to great USMLE preparation is learning all the angles of high-yield questions such as these. Our discussion today was limited, but additional questions that are worth exploring include those listed on the slide in front of you. It's important to think about these kinds of questions whenever you're reviewing a USMLE question so that you can be adequately prepared for other versions of this question should they come up. 
I want to thank you for watching this five minute Q review from Elite Medical Prep. Elite Medical Prep combines excellence in medicine and excellence in teaching to create elite test preparation. For more information about our services, you can go to our website, www.elitemedicalprep.com, or contact us at the email or phone number listed on the slide. Thank you for your attention.